Hey guys, Sherman here with a deck profile for the current WGP JP season. I've been playing um, in a few of these WGP tournaments in the area. The tournament I went to was the one in Fresno. Uh, this was a 27 man tournament and I placed fifth overall with a record of four wins, one loss. I lost round one and then I won every single uh, round afterwards. And um, I was playing pad. So uh, I do own pad as a set. I like the set quite a bit. I used to play Puzzles and Dragons, you know, in high school, way back when. Yeah, I, obviously the set's really good. Um, one of the most broken finishers uh, ever seen in White Shorts. Uh, pretty good. And so, yeah, I feel pretty confident with the deck. I think it actually matches up really well right now um, in the JP meta with a lot of the popular decks running around in JP. Um, yeah, I, th I think pad's really good. I do have some ideas about pad. Uh, the reason I'm doing this deck profile really is because uh, I have some particular ideas about pad and my build of pad is pretty different than I think a lot of pad builds I've seen out there. And I just kind of want to illustrate like my testing process with pad and kind of the conclusion I've come to with the set. I really like my list. I probably will not change my list anymore. Um, this is like, yeah, it's pretty much finalized. So um, I like to do deck profiles when I have more or less finalized a deck. Um, I have gone through a lot of the iterations with it. So um, so two things about pad that are really important. So if you're like trying to get into pad, um, trying to figure out how to play it and um, do well with it, um, I, I'll have two main ideas I would like to share, try to get you into like the frame of mind of thinking about how to play pad. So first thing is that the, the primary goal of playing pad is to hit level three with as many resources as possible so that you can do the full combo. So the full combo is Triple Nay with 2-1 Fagan and a Stock Swap. That's full combo, All right? Um, stock Swap, you basically almost always Stock Swap if your opponent's stock is clean, just because it can potentially rip extra cards out of their deck. And also it'll put more clean cards back into rotation uh, so that you have more targets to shuffle back. Um, yeah, even if they have like three cards clean in stock, it's still worth it to Stock Swap three because this deck is a, it's like a kill deck, right? It's like you just want to kill your opponent from wherever they are. Um, with your full combo because Nay represents so much damage by herself um, if you can hit all your mills. So yeah, it doesn't matter. They're level zero. You have level three with uh, all the stock you need. Triple Nay, Fagan, Stock Swap, full combo, bam. That's what you do. That, that, that's your game plan. That is your only only game plan. So everything in your deck should lead towards that game plan. What I'm taught, the reason why I'm talking about this, like repeating this point, is that if you're playing a card in your deck that does not support that game plan, that card should not be there. So the primary um, suspect, the primary, um, yeah, the primary suspect of this that a lot of JP lists play is the 3-2 early play healer. Um, I, I think it's a Lucifer, um, the double rare. A lot of JP players like this card. They play this card at high numbers because it has a soul trigger. Obviously, soul triggers are good. I'm not saying that they're bad. Soul triggers are good. Um, this card can come out at level two where your deck doesn't do a lot. Um, it, I guess it can contest board maybe. And then it heals. The heal is like nice, right? But that doesn't help you win the game. It doesn't help you get to triple nay. In fact, it takes you further away from triple nay. Like you play a healer, you're further away from triple nay. And um, and even if you play a healer, you can still triple nay. You're probably not stock swapping, right? And a lot of people, a lot of players do not consider the stock swap as part of your finisher combo. It 100% is. If you can triple nay stock swap with Fagan, your opponent is probably dead no matter where they are. Uh, no matter what deck state they are, they're just probably dead. So. Like a lot of players are like, oh, I can play a healer and still have enough stock for triple nay. Yes, but then, then you can't stock swap. And if you can't stock swap, you might not kill them if they are really compressed and if they have like a good deck state, right? Like you need to be able to also mess them up their compression wise because the nay shuffle back is, is not enough by itself uh, if your opponent is really compressed. So factor in the stock swap is part of full combo. Do not play cards that are extraneous and do not help you achieve your full combo turn, right? Which is a lot of stock, right? I believe it is... Um, it should be 11 stock for everything if you have not played the two one down, right? So yeah, you don't have room to play early play healers and other stuff, right? That, that should just not be part of your deck, should not be part of your game plan. This deck does one thing, it hits level three and it wins the game, okay? The second thing that you need to understand about Nay, um, and I, I think this is where, uh, this, I'm like really critiquing a lot of li Nay lists that are ver running very low level zero count, right? So Pat does not have a, a soul trigger on a level zero card, right? Unlike some of the other really busted sets that, that do. So every single level zero you play is a potential miss for the actual uh, overall nay combo turn. So I see a lot of lists that are on very low zero count, right? Like I think uh, as low as 12, um, but 14 is pretty common. 
I think 16 is also pretty common, right? But the thing you have to understand about Nay is that um, milling six is overkill. It's actually overkill. Um, if you mill four or more on every single mill, so you get the burn three and the shovel back, or sorry, the burn four and the shovel back three, um, if you can do that on triple Nay, your opponent is also probably just dead from like any part of level two, right? Like, um, you have, to cons you have to compare Nay with other combos that are very similar. So the two combos that are very similar right now in JP are Ichika, 3-2 Ichika from Quint's movie, and 3-2 Shauna from uh, Dengeki Bunko. These are all combos that are very similar, right? So um, Ichika on cancel with the Climax combo, it is um, burn X and then shuffle back X. And if you have a full board, those the X is four. So it's burn four, shuffle back four. So the same amount of burn as Nay, and then the shuffle back is one more than Nay. And then Shauna, I believe, is actually just straight up Nay, right? <laughs> Wait, give me a second. Let me Google this. I don't have Shauna memorized off the top of my head. Um, but I'll just pull her up right now and read this card, right? So Shauna is on attack, right? You ditch two, you burn four, and then shuffle back X. And X is equal to other. So it's the same thing as Ichika, right? So shuffle, burn four, and if you have full board, shuffle back four, right? Um, so, so both of these are, bur like, they're very similar. Like, it's a uh, burn four, and then it's a shuffle back. That is a high number. Uh, for Nei, it's three. For Shauna and Ichika, it's four. The thing with Shauna and Ichika, though, is that part of their card, part of the shuffle, like, the, the, the combo, requires something to be canceled. And for something to be canceled, it means that your opponent, um, you know, you ha your opponent has to be in a specific deck state. And if they're not in that specific deck state, you might not get your full value of the combo, right? So for Ichika, they have to cancel the swing. And so it's kind of hard sometimes to swing, um, you know, four damage with the Ichika. And even if you do swing four damage with Ichika, if they take it, all of a sudden you lose a ton of value on that Ichika swing. Yeah, because, you know, your opponent just ate four. And the same thing with Shauna. Uh, the player has to cancel the Shauna burn four uh, before you get the shuffle back, right? And so, but the thing is, even with that being said, triple Ichika and triple Shauna are very, very powerful combos. Like, if you're 3-0 and you're staring down either triple Sh Ichika or triple Shauna, you probably think you're dead. If you're like 2-5-2-6 two, two, staring down triple Ichika or triple Shauna, you probably think you're dead, right? Like, like it's super good, right? You like It's like, wow, this combo like might kill me. Like, I could be like mid-level 2 and I could feel like triple Ichika or triple Shauna could potentially kill me if I cancel the wrong instances of damage, right? Uh, there is no if I cancel for Nate. If you mid-roll Nay, so four soul triggers on every Nay turn, but uh, attack, but you triple Nay, uh, that is just basically triple Shauna or triple Ichika without the, like, if your opponent canceled all the, like, the wrong instances of damage, which means they're probably dead from, like, mid-two, even on, a, like, a mid-roll for Nay. So, like, 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 like that, that's actually crazy. If you think, you just have to process this, like, think about it. If I mid-roll Nay, my opponent is probably dead from mid-level two, right? Which means that like I don't actually need to sack my level zero game to kill my opponent from mid-level two. And like generally speaking, um, when you play with this deck, your opponent is going to end up at somewhere around mid-level two because every card in the deck has like a soul trigger, so you're pushing a lot of damage, right? So like you don't need to sack level zero game for your opponent to just lose to your full combo. So if you triple Nay and also stock swap on top of that, that's like that's like triple triple Shauna stock swap or like triple Ichika stock swap, which does not exist in Quince Lamal. Um, Right, that would be crazy. That would actually be so insane. Um, and so they're probably dead from like 2-0 with triple nay stock swap, even if you don't high roll every single nay attack. And obviously you still have a chance to high roll because your deck still compresses pretty well, still has a lot of soul triggers, right? So, sorry, that was a long rant, but the bottom line is do not, you don't have to sack your level zero game for this deck to, to achieve its goal, right? It, it, the finishing combo of this deck is so strong. Um, it's important to get there in a healthy state. It's important to get there with a lot of resources, right? And if you sack your level zero game, if you play like 12 zeros and you just like have to skip turns at level zero, you're probably not going to get to level three with a good amount of resources um, at a good, like a good pace of the game so that you can do the triple nay plus stock stop combo. So that's why I think it's important to play a lot of zeros. That's why I think it's important to prioritize your early game in this deck that you don't just don't like fall, roll over and die so that your opponent can roll over and die when you hit level three with a ton of resources. All right, I think Pat is very strong if you just build it right and play it right. Okay, so finally we're going to get to the deck list, um, and I think as you see this deck list, you'll see what I mean. So I won't I won't belabor the points too much more um, when I'm actually doing the deck profile. So we're playing four copies of um, 
the go to memory drop search. I think this is pretty much mandatory in every pad uh, list. Gives you all of consistency at level zero. Um, this card, I love it when my opponent side it because I just side right back. Uh, your deck runs a lot of soul triggers, so you can usually side level ones for damage. If you play climax, you can usually side level twos for damage. And then um, if your opponent doesn't kill it, it's just a free plus one, right? And remember, like we just want resources. We want our resource game to be healthy. So I just keep siding this until at the very end, I just decide to front it or something, right? But like, I'm totally happy just playing the side war with this card. Um, I don't care if my opponent pluses, as long as my resource game is good, they're, they're gonna be dead, so. Yeah, four copies of Amaterasu, this card, and Tsukiyomi. This card is just crazy, uh, like the best card in the deck um, in terms of uh, just being able to get a lot of your important cards uh, at level zero. And it allow allows us to run a lot of one ofs um, at zero and one to um, kind of play around. It's very, very good. Definitely, uh, yeah, very instrumental for the success of this deck. <clears throat> And then uh, three brainstorm. I do play the yellow brainstorm. For the scry effect is really good. Uh, synergizes really well with the level one combo. Um, and then uh, yellow is also kind of important. We do want to uh, have extra copies of yellow to level. I I'd rather level this one than the Amaterasu because I, yeah. Uh, you want as many copies of Amaterasu in rotation uh, on final turn so you can fish them all out. Um, I, I think a lot of people have seen that combo play. Yeah. So this is good brainstorm. I, I really like it. Uh, more than the blue one. <clears throat> okay, next we're playing three copies of this. Uh, it's the Rico. So on play, discard a card, reveal top card, uh, salvage equal to level or lower, and then if it has a soul trigger, it also gains additional power. This card is really good. Uh, it's not at four because I just don't have space. Um, it's okay to shave, I think, one copy. Three is plenty. Um, you still feel really good like grabbing this off your level one combo and stuff like that. Uh, it just really helps you hand fix, uh, get really important cards, and also get information. All right, next we're gonna have the one of, so one of climax swap. Uh, I would love to play this at two, but there's just no room. Um, and uh, it's diminishing returns on the second one, but also it can get you an extra stock if you reveal level two or higher, uh, it does come up. One clean cut, again, we really care about our level zero game being good. So if we're going second and our opponent has a card that we can clean cut, I'll immediately Amano Rasu clean cut uh, just to get the plus one. You just really want the value. Um, and then in late game, I just try to level this and sell my other blue, because my other blue is really good. This is not very good in the late game, so I try to level this as much as possible. Also Dragon. All right, this is the spicy card. I feel like a lot of people don't play this, but I do I do know that there's some Japanese lists that have been playing this card at, at one, which is the correct number, I think. Um, so this card, what it is, is if you have one or less other character, it gets plus one level and plus 2,500, sorry, plus 2,500 power. So total level two, uh, one, four, five, okay? Um, that's impossible to kill at level zero. It's actually pretty much impossible unless you have like a lot of power pump or you like your opponent commits a climax they're basically not killing this um which is like yeah so this is almost like it's like a really free plus one if you go first uh and then you only run one because if you have a Madarasu, you play a Madarasu and you search this and you play this and it fulfills one or less other conditions so you just like you get the free plus one right so this card's like really bad diminishing like if you run more but because of our Madarasu, we can just run one and we almost always get it because like five copies of it and basically in your opening hand right so really, really good. It comes up like so much. Like I win so many games if I go first and I just get this, like Amaterasu into this. And it's just like, it's crazy. It's so good, so good. Um, and then uh, they can't side it either. Because <laughs> this is a level one. So if they try lane, because like the thing that happens a lot um, with uh, with this deck is that like you'll play, if you don't play this card, you just play like this, for example, on turn one. And you'll put it try lanes, like try lanes, they clean cut this um, and they just like freaking smack you. And then you're just like, so far behind after with it like that they have so much advantage you're so far behind like it feels really bad right but then you play this and they're like they actually just can't try lane reasonably because they can't side this and then they front they freaking just like neg one for no reason and it's like really bad for like your opponent so yeah this card is just phenomenal and, and then of course we level this for yellow if we can because yeah our other yellow is good and then one copy of remdra uh, it's the fukajiro and then the, the summoner on attack. Uh, I d this was like a very late add, but I'm really glad uh, I added it at the end because it does come up quite often. So this comes up going second if you uh, can't clean cut something, like if they run a card that you can't clean cut, um, you can Amaterasu into this and then try for the summon off of this effect uh, to see if you can get the plus, which is really good. Uh, the mill comes up. So like sometimes, uh, like if I really need a mill out, I can like, uh, I can Rico for it, salvage it, and then like get it to, to get myself the mill out. Um, and then also very importantly, it is the only green that doesn't have a soul trigger in this deck. Um, and so generally speaking, 
like, I try to level at third um, if I can, or like level at some point in the game so I can have green for the stock swap, um, and and also just like remove the soul trigger, like remove a non soul trigger from my deck, right? So like before I was just running stock swap, and then like it felt really bad always to like level stock swap because that's just a soul trigger that could have been in my deck. But now with this, I do have like a target, a green target that I can level without, um, with, while keeping as many soul triggers as I can in my deck. So I think it's a, it's just a really really good one. Of, um, yeah, it, it turns out it's like. Yeah, it comes up a lot and it's, it's really nice. And then you can always get to it with these two cards. All right, uh, level one combo, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, soul trigger, yada yada. All right, three copies of the, I don't know this guy's name, but it's the Shuffleback. Um, I went from four to zero, or sorry, I went from four to one to three. Yeah, so I was at four originally because I was just like, soul trigger, costless, amazing. And then in testing, it, just like, it was just like not that good. Um, so I, I dropped it down to one to make room for other cards, and then I realized that like, oh, if I drop it down to one, it's actually like, um, there's like some plays that you can do towards the end of the deck where you want two to loop. So like, let's say you have like one climax in deck uh, and three cards, you shuffle back two to make it five, you brainstorm, uh, you hit one, you salvage one, and you shuffle back two more to make three, and you shuffle back like non-triggers so that you can, you can attack and trigger non-triggers so that your stock is clean. Um, and it has non triggers so you can keep more soul triggers in the deck. So like, you, you do want more than two, so you can do stuff like that. Um, and then I think like, uh, yeah, it, like, I didn't like it at first when I was playing at four, because I felt like a lot of the times it wasn't that useful, but then later on I realized that like, yeah, sometimes you just get into situations like where you're low deck, and just having the shuffle back is quite good, in those situations specifically. So you do want to see it for those. I think three is a good number. Three or four is good. Um, definitely more than two. Two is like the bare minimum you would run and I think two is a little bit dangerous. Like you could lose one somewhere um, and then you wouldn't be able to do like double shuffle back uh, plays that are quite good. So yeah, I, I think I settled on three. I think three is really nice. All right, we're running three of the Dialchen Bouncer. Um, this is a necessity now that uh, Licorice and Pad both have ways to deny our burns on field and um, Three, I think, is now like the minimum. I was on two before, and then I just like, there's so many games where you need double, right? Like Licorice especially, they will just play two on the board and like just kind of like dare you to have double. And so if you don't have double against Licorice, you basically, you just like can't play the game um, at level three. And then um, against Shauna, they're less likely to do double, but they still will run at least two. And so in the games where they can do double, they will double. So like, we basically have to run more than they run of anti-burn, right? So like Licorice and Shauna, they're usually on like two. Uh, I don't think they're on three. Like two is like probably mostly what they're on. So like we need to run one more. So it's easier for us to see our answer to their um, their counter, right? Yeah, so. And then also like it, the power sometimes comes up and then it goes to the bottom deck. So it helps with our nay. All right, uh, two, one, the, uh, the support. Level support and then the climax that gives the choice, the soul trigger. There are some lists that don't run this, right? They run like the one choice and then they just run more pants. So then it frees up slots. But honestly, this card is like so cracked. Like it's so easy to get the power. And then the power is like crazy amount of power, right? Like 2K is insane. Um, at, like in, in the mid game, this with the shovel back, if you have like mostly yellow board, you can actually just like kill early plays. Right, it's like, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, I think this card is crazy. I really like playing choice, right? Choice is good, so. Yeah, I wouldn't cut this. Yeah, this card is good. <clears throat> and then I run two dragon. This is a, this used to be a one of, and then I bumped it up because uh, Alice Gear Aegis released, and a lot of players around where I'm at are experimenting with it. And the standby deck is like, just like really gross if they can um, snowball um, out of control. So <laughs> I bumped this up to two because this card like answers the, the standby deck pretty well. And it's just really good. Like Blink is really good against that deck because you like make them lose the trans markers and then the cross turn power. And then it also bottom deck bombs something else too, right? And it sometimes refunds the stock. So I, I like it at two. I think you basically bump this up to two in metas where you feel like there's a lot of like early play threats. Um, and then you can drop it down to one and bump something else to four, like bump this up to four um, if you feel like that that's not as big of an issue. But it's de definitely nice to keep this as like a one of um, in the deck, yeah. Um, and then I play two copies of the PR, uh, which is the early play, and then top check X, where X is the number of your opponent's characters. I would play more, I don't own more. I split a case with a friend, and we split PRs down the line. So he has two, I have two. Uh, we are both playing two each. 
And yeah, I mean, card's great. I would run three, I think. I don't know if I would run four, but three three would be pretty nice to have. Um, but I think two is also fine. Uh, it's like, it's really nice to have, but I don't think it's ever like utterly necessary. Like you can play around not having it, but it is definitely like super nice to have, right? There are some games where like, if you don't have this, like you're pretty screwed. Um, but yeah, like it's still, I don't think it's still, I don't think it's necessary. You just kind of have to like grip a choice harder basically. All right, I have four nay. I do have one SP, pretty nice. Pull that from my case. Uh, I mean, <laughs> nothing else to say about the nay. And then uh, three stock swap, as I mentioned before. Some people played four. Um, I think with the one rem draw, which is kind of like the fourth copy that we can easily level. Um, I don't think we need the fourth stock swap, like natural stock swap. Uh, I, I do think the heal effect is like really bad because you have to pay one for it. So like I generally don't, don't play this unless I need a stock swap. And then in the situations where like you don't have the rem draw and you need color, um, you can clock a stock swap for green, play the stock swap for the stock swap effect, and then heal the stock swap to the bottom of your deck with Nay. Uh, which is like pretty nice because like you clock it for the soul trigger and the green and then you use the green to play it and then you nay heal the soul trigger down right so uh, you can do that too that's a really nice play um so that's why you do want to run at least like three i probably would not run any less than three i think three is like a really good number and then uh climax is fine. Yeah, so i think four choice is the is the, like the best build here because like choice is so nice to trigger um it's such a good trigger in this deck because um uh, not only is it able to grab our level threes and level twos but it actually is able to grab all our level ones because they all have soul triggers so yeah even like an early choice usually like ends up being really playable <clears throat> so this is 18 zeros which is probably the most i've seen any pad list run right I, I think most pad players are um 16 max and then like they're cutting level zero game for like more soul triggers i just think that's such a big mistake right you want your level zero game to be consistent um you want uh your level one combo to be able to grab good cards um, and useful cards. I think my level zero line is already very, very slim down and I wouldn't cut a single card in level zero. I would run, I would want to play more level zeros, except I do think that if I play more, um, there is a bit of like diminishing return in terms of like, um, that's like, <clears throat> it's adding extra risk in terms of mi missing the nays without necessarily giving back that much more. Like right now, this level zero line feels really good. Like the one ofs are all very easy to access with the three of Rico. And the three of Rico is also pretty easy to access with like the rest of the cards, right? So it's like a really good ratio right now. Um, and I probably would not change it from here. And then the rest of the deck is just really teched out to beat basically everything. Uh, Nate's just so crazy. So yeah, uh, that's the deck. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm definitely down to talk more about this deck and about pad and Nate in general. I, I also do own the rest of pad. I have played all the pad decks. Um, it's just not as good as Nate. Like, Nate is just too good, right? So, um, but I have played Alexander. I, I don't really like playing gold bar decks, so, yeah. Um, yeah, but, like, yeah. Just let me know in the comments below. Talk more about this deck. Uh, if you have any questions and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so, thanks for watching. Um, this is... Yeah, I wish I got the invite, but I didn't. But I did 4-1, so it's pretty good, right? I think the deck is really good. And uh, definitely really powerful, right? I hope Japan uh, does something about this deck, because I think Nate is just way too good. Uh, makes it kind of not fun to play against this deck, honestly. Like, if I'm sitting across from this deck, it feels really bad. Deck has a really good matchup into Spy Family and Chainsaw Man, in my opinion, because you can just side their level 1s um, for damage. A lot of decks will just, like, kind of give up against their level 1s because, like, they can't do anything there. But uh, we can just side. Like, siding Fiona is, like, pretty silly, right? Like, side, 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 1, 1, 1. And then the Fiona player goes, like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even play this, right? And also, like, yeah, siding the Kishibe, I think. Um... Yeah, they just like, it reduces a lot of the value that they get from those combos or from those packages, right? Um, and then we also do want to side a lot in this deck because we don't want to ever hit them to level three first. Like if they hit level three before we hit level three, we're probably going to be dead because yeah, like there's like our compression is like way worse than any other decks. And like, there's a good chance that like, yeah, we're just not going to be able to survive <laughs> uh, their finish your turn um, if they get hit to, hit to level three first. So like, Try to side opportunistically in this deck. Like, um, yeah, like if you're ahead in damage, I would just start siding um, where possible. Uh, obviously, you do want to kill stuff so that like they don't get a plus, right? Like, just like don't give pluses for free. But I, I would start siding stuff that like it would be difficult to kill. Like, I wouldn't like overreach to kill stuff. Basically, yeah, siding is is so good in this deck. All right, that's it. I I haven't done a deck profile in a while, so thank you so much. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.